Island this afternoon in Alaska. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm David Schuster. Welcome to a special edition of Hardball. Chris Matthews is off tonight. The reaction is pouring in. Bizarre, embarrassing, strange, erratic. She's finished. And that reaction is coming from Republicans to the news that Sarah Palin has announced that she's not only decided she's not going to run for another term of governor, but with a year and a half left in her first term as governor of Alaska, she's stepping aside to allow the lieutenant governor to continue. This afternoon, Palin uh, used some basketball analogies, and she said, I know when it's time to pass the ball for victory. She also said, we know we can affect positive change outside government this, uh, at this moment in time on another scale. Uh, it is a blockbuster political development, awfully surprising that anybody would choose to make this kind of political news on the Friday of a July 4th weekend where news tends to go to die, uh, and it just adds to the bizarre nature of this story at this hour. Uh, for some instant reaction, we are joined now by Republican strategist Mike Murphy. He was once a close advisor to John McCain. He has helped uh, advised Mitt Romney. He helped uh, Go Governor Schwarzenegger take the reins of office in California, one of the most respected voices in the Republican Party uh, establishment. Mike, what do you make of what Sarah Palin did today? Well, I'm kind of gobsmacked like everybody else. Uh, originally, I heard the rumor that she was not going to run for re-election, and kind of under the normal rules of politics, that makes some sense. She'd have a full post-2010 window to, you know, go out, frankly, make a little money for her family, uh, explore a presidential race. But now, resigning two and a half years in like this it is uh let me put it this way i think the grand jury in monaco somewhere is going to have to take back the grand award for somewhat erratic and bizarre political behavior from mark sanford now awarded to governor palin <laughs> she topped him as far as surprise factor is concerned i uh i don't really know what to make of it other than i'm right now i think you just have to take her at her word she's gonna pull out of politics for a while is it possible that there is another shoe to drop? I mean, it, it seems like for somebody who has as much ambition as Sarah Palin does, it's hard to imagine that she suddenly has decided, you know what, I'm not interested in the next rung up the ladder. I'm not interested in a presidential run, that maybe there's some personal development, some family development that we don't know about yet that explains why is this decision now? Yeah, it's always possible. You know, you can't really speculate, <clears throat> but there is something very odd about it. I, I will say this. She has been the target of a lot of hostile kind of uh, ethics complaints and things in her state political environment there in Alaska. She's probably highly frustrated with it. She clearly mentioned that in her statement. So she may just be deciding now to, you know, shut down the Alaska chapter of her political life. And whether or not another one will be opened or not is anybody's guess at this point. I will say if she does run for the nomination, this will be a, uh, an episode she'll have a lot of explaining to do about and I think would damage a campaign. Is it, uh, does it damage a campaign in the way that uh, one Republican said to me, this is like the Republican version of the Howard Dean scream? I mean, for people who were close to Howard Dean back in 2004, at the time they didn't think that his scream the night of the Iowa caucuses would be as horrible as it seemed to everybody else, but it proved to be fatal. Is that the same situation with Sarah Palin, that the people around her think, oh, you know, it's logical for her to take some time, uh, not have to worry about being governor, she can always put things back together. But as you said, does she recover from this? And if so, how does she possibly do that? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, my observations from, you know, quite afar has been that the kind of Alaska political staff she has there in their governor's operation, whatever, does not exactly work with laser-like precision at these matters. There's been a lot of kind of bouncing around on, on various things. So I don't know. I mean, I, my view was that she had quite a hard road to follow in national politics to begin with. And this sure doesn't make it any easier. I think we're all jumping to the conclusion that she might still have national ambitions, and I'm not sure that's true. This, she could really be kind of leaving the political arena and still be a big voice on issues and things like that and get out of the candidate business. We just don't know yet, but uh, it's a shocker, no doubt about it. Mike, part of the reporting is that uh, the commissioners that uh, serve uh, essentially alongside the governor in, in her office, they did not know about this until apparently she told them today. Uh, Micah Begich, the Democratic governor who has often clashed with, um, I'm sorry, the Democratic senator who's often clashed with Governor Palin, uh, met with her just two days ago and said uh, they talked about the future and the Alaska oil pipeline and some security issues, and that she gave absolutely no indication that she would be leaving her office a year and a half before her term was out. Um, what does that tell you about all of this? 
Well, I think one. I think she holds pretty close counsel, so I, I wouldn't expect a political rival like that to be one of the you know first to know. But uh, it, it's definitely. I, it, there's. It leads to me trying to observe this thing and decode it. There doesn't seem to be any big planning or strategy here. It looks like kind of a a, a fed up uh, straw that broke the camel's back kind of instinct or uh, a just sudden decision. And you know maybe this pressure's been building up for a while, but I think the decision was taken to do this quite recently, and she just kind of did it. Now the way it kind of came out today. It might have leaked in some awkward way a little earlier than they wanted to because it, it certainly has not been a, uh, uh, a completely orchestrated sort of thing. It just happened. But uh, I don't know. Some something, some button got pushed. Something, Something's afoot. I don't think we do know the entire story yet, but I'm sure we will in the coming weeks. All right. Mike Murphy, uh, political strategist, uh, is also, of course, part of the MSNBC, NBC News family. Mike, uh, thank you so much. We appreciate it. And again, uh, if you're just joining us, Sarah Palin announced today in that video that you see there in front of a crowd of maybe, you know, a dozen people uh, that uh, not only was she not going to run for uh, a second term when this term is up in a year and a half, but uh, she is turning over her office in three weeks to the lieutenant governor. And again, uh, Sarah Palin said that she uh, talked to her family about it. At one point, she said this has been in the works for some time, although it appeared that nobody outside her family knew about it. And uh, in her statement today, she said, we know we can affect positive change outside government at this moment in time on another scale. And when you talk about on another scale, that almost leads you to the conclusion that she at least seems to have in the back of her mind possibly some sort of national political campaign because she has been extremely popular with a certain element in the conservative wing of the Republican Party. She is obviously a, a huge fundraiser in terms of the potential money that she can bring in, and she does have her supporters. Joining us now to talk about um, their reaction and how all of this uh, may play in the sort of uh, rest of the political